It seems the theme of our show today is saying goodbye. Everyone who has had a dog at some point has had to say goodbye to a loving member of their family. You experience an emotional turmoil, and if you're lucky, you have people to support you through this loss. However, it seems the more common experience is a lack of support and a lack of recognition that the loss of a dog is such a significant event. Today, we're going to explore this reality, and to help us do that is author Sid Corpy. Sid's recent book is Good Grief, Finding Peace After Loss. Welcome, Sid. And I have those little white ears per sticking up in the frame of my camera belong to your dogs. Oliver. <laughs> Oliver. And Keely over there. Keely, and then we have Ambrose. Ambrose and Blanche. And Blanche. We've never before had four dogs on the set at once. This is a first, and Ooh. it's going beautifully. And it's obvious that you have a love for dogs, and that in part has certainly motivated you to write this book. And we're going to certainly be talking about your book. I think it's such a timely topic. It's such an important topic. And we're going to be condensing this very well-written, thought-out book into a very short discussion today. So I'm going to begin by asking you, Sid, please set the stage for this timely topic. Well, the reason that I wrote this is because, as you said, there really is very little support for people who are grieving a pet loss. Uh, our society is absolutely death phobic, and they will do anything they can to avoid the topic entirely. And then when you couple that with the fact that so many people view pet loss as frivolous, and you get them saying wonderful things like, oh, what are you crying about? It's just a dog. Go get another one. The people who are going through the grief, it's, it's a compounded pain because you aren't given permission to grieve fully. And when you have the permission withheld and uh, people saying these insensitive things, you're going to feel like, okay, there's something wrong with me if I'm feeling all of these strong emotions. So people end up rushing through the grieving process, denying it, uh, burying those feelings, and that's very detrimental because those raw feelings will find a way to come out, either emotionally, physically, or even in relationships. Mm -hmm. Certainly when we lose a, a human being in our life, it's an extreme um, grief, but the process mm -hmm. is, the grieving is very similar mm -hmm. with other losses, other degree of losses. Mm -hmm. And even though dogs are dogs are not human beings, they are members of our family. We love them very much, and when we lose them, we feel a very strong sadness and grief about them. And Absolutely. you've described, you've touched a little bit on that, is, uh, is there anything predominant about the grieving process that our viewers would benefit from knowing? Well, we have the basic five, which are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. People will expect to uh, go through all of those to one degree or another, but I personally find the first one, denial, the most worrisome, mm -hmm. because people who are in denial may started at the preemptive grieving stage, when you see your dog aging or becoming a little ill. If you turn a blind eye to that, you may miss out on treating them for something that can heal them and prolong their lives. Or on the flip side of that coin, you might have someone in such denial that the dog would ever pass that they will put them through incredibly invasive medical procedures just to keep them around a little longer, even though it's decimating the animal's quality of life. Oh, sure. So those two things invariably lead themselves to guilt, which is anger turned inward. Then Definitely. there are a lot of people who can't handle the feelings of guilt or sorrow, so they prefer to go straight to anger projected outward. They might blame the vet, they might blame the person whose car struck the dog, they may blame their concept of God, whatever. You also talk about the importance, which I so agree with, of rituals and mm -hmm. memorializing the um, the whole process, the, the goodbye mm -hmm. process, the saying goodbye, and also to move on from saying goodbye to finding joy again, mm -hmm. which is so important because if we don't say goodbye, we can't get to that joyful place. Exactly. So tell our viewers briefly some of the rituals that you um, recommend in the book and some of the um, information, and a little more information about moving on as well. Sure. Memorializing is a very necessary step because it brings a sense of closure. I mean, grief goes on forever and it cycles around, but you do need to say a final goodbye. You need to honor your pet and say thank you for what he or she has brought into your life. And 
it can be something as simple and private as you lighting a candle and sitting in quiet meditation or it can be a full-blown pet funeral with an animal chaplain such as myself presiding and your friends and family there. It, it doesn't matter how you choose to do it, but you do want to get past just the tears and move to remembering things that will make you smile. And that's not to rush you there. They'll be mixed and blended. Um, I found that if people are creative, it helps them to heal. For instance, they may write a letter, poem, song, story about their pet. They may draw or paint a picture. They may create a beautiful gravestone. It doesn't matter what approach you take. Just make sure you get to that point so you don't stay stuck in one form of your grieving. Because if you do stay stuck, you'll say things like, I'm never getting another pet. That hurts too much. Mm -hmm. You're actually dishonoring your pet's lessons to you to live in the moment and to love unconditionally if you shut down. So when you are ready, just ask your pet to paw pick you your next loving companion. And uh, that's a great way to honor them and move on and give a home to another loving animal. It's a lovely thought. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you so much for writing this book. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's so timely and so needed. How can our viewers learn more about, reach you, learn more about the book? You can go to my website at goodgriefpetloss.com. If you choose to order the book there, you will have $2 donated to a no-kill animal shelter, and you can have it inscribed any way you like. Otherwise, it's available online at amazon.com or any of the major bookstores, or you can even request it from your library. Is this Ambrose? This is Ambrose. Ambrose, your one smart cookie. You know what's in here? I'm going to bring your paw down. Ambrose, we have... <gasps> what's that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can you pull his little head out of there so I don't... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go, sweetie. These are yours. These are no, Charlie no. Bear products. Provides oh. us with <laughs> Charlie Bear treats for all of our canine Yay. guests. And this is for Ambrose and Keely and, and Blanche Oliver and, Oliver. and Blanche. Those are all for you. Say thank and you, pups. We have this for you. Oh, how wonderful. Thank, thank you so much, you. everybody. You did a great job. Four puppies thank on the set you. at once. Great job, guys. Yeah.